Hey, this is Roy Richardson, and this is how to install MySQL 8.0 and MySQL Workbench 8.0. It used to be, if you did an installation of uh, MySQL 8, then the only Workbench out there that was available was 6.7. 6.7, if you want the default install of MySQL 8, would not connect. And so this video goes through, and luckily now that MySQL 8's out, uh, and MySQL Workbench is out that goes with it, then this should eliminate a lot of the problems that you may have previously had. So we're going to go to downloads. Now notice right here, I am at the dev.mysql.com website. I'm going to click on downloads, and then we want community. Community means the free version of MySQL and MySQL Workbench. And even in productive environments, MySQL is a great way to go. So here we go, we're going to choose community, and we're going to choose community server. And then I'm going to scroll down. It's going to give me options. Here it is. The MySQL installer for Windows. So we're going to choose that. And then we're going to scroll down. We're at the MySQL installer. So I'm going to scroll down some more. Da, da, da. And it's already figured out, hey, you're running Windows. Great. Okay. And I'm going to choose to download the big one, the 230 meg. That way it doesn't have to go back and download more stuff. Once you download it, everything you need is downloaded, so I'm going to choose download, and then scroll down here, and then you see login or sign up, you do not have to sign up, literally go right here and say no thanks, just start my download. And a window will pop up, and I'll say save, and that begins downloading. And while I do have a fast internet connection, I'm going to pause the video while it downloads. All right, so MySQL 8's finished downloading. The installer has, and so I'm going to choose Show in Folder, and then I'm going to run it. So there it is, MySQL Installer Community. And I'm going to double click 8.0.11.0. Just say 8.x, because these instructions, unless MySQL does something really radical, which they haven't in the past, um, you should be able to use for any version of 8.8. All right, 8.x. So I'm say yes, we want to. Allow it to run. And yes, we do want to allow it to modify our hard drive. Basically, it's going to modify our hard drive by installing. Um, and here's a license agreement. I do recommend reading it if you you know, want to know what the heck's going on. As it's free software, um, uses nothing really crazy, but you know, it is good to read. Uh, it might make you sleepy, but it's good to read. Next. All right. Now, we are not going to go with defaults. Why? Because we only want to install exactly what we need. So we're going to choose custom, and we're going to pick and choose what we install. So we'll choose next. So first up, we go to MySQL servers, and we choose MySQL. And notice it only offers the 64-bit version. The world has moved, and there's only really 64-bit versions. So we're going to select the green arrow and say, yep, we want to install that. So there's that. And then we're going to go to Applications and MySQL Workbench. And here we go. We want to install that. After I hit the green arrow, there we go. All right. And so that is all we're going to install. There are a lot of things that if you're a developer, I would have just went with the developer install, which is the default. If you are just a casual user, this is the minimum that you would need to install. Now, if you are big, big on using MySQL, there are connectors for different things. Uh, there's also uh, an OWC connection here. If you want to use Connect to Excel, maybe maybe you want to use Microsoft Excel to do some reporting out of MySQL. These are things you can do. We do not need them for what I'm doing. For what I'm doing, I just want the SQL, the MySQL server running, and I want to run MySQL Workbench against it in order to uh, create databases and to run queries. And that's what we need. So that's all we're gonna do. All that's all I'm installing. Choose next. And this installation assumes that you have not installed MySQL previously. The reason I mentioned that is because if there's anything that's going to mess with that configuration, it'll mess this up. If you, for example, had MySQL set before and you don't remember what the password is, it will bog down because it says, oh well. I know you have a password encrypted and I can't get in, so I can't do what you want me to do. All right, I'm gonna choose execute. 
this install goes pretty quick on my computer. Hopefully it goes quick on yours. Um, it's the configuration where everything gets, gets modeled down. So installation is quick, but, and we can click here on details and you'll see all the file changes that are taking place to your computer at the same time. All these files are being loaded onto your hard drive. There's no smoke and mirrors here. Okay, sits so at 99 for a few seconds and then bam, it's done. Complete. All right, I'm gonna hit next. And now we are at product configuration, ready to configure. So this is where it could get interesting. So please pay attention to what we select. All right, standalone MySQL is fine for what we're doing here. I'm gonna choose next. Okay, this is fine also. Um, notice the port number here is 3306. I don't recommend changing it. Uh, all the software you're using is going to expect that to be the port number for MySQL. If you are really paranoid and security minded, you may want to make changes to the port number as I jokingly call security through obscurity. But then that makes you have to change everything you would use to connect to MySQL with. So don't make that change unless you know what you're doing. Next. All right. Here's where it gets interesting. Now, the default is to use strong password encryption for authentication. I recommend if you're just casually playing with MySQL and you're not running a productive server, I recommend use a legacy authentication method because it's just going to work like it should. So I'm going to say use legacy. If you are running a productive environment, you absolutely should use a strong encryption. Um, I mean, these days, hackers are getting into everything. Um, so... I'm going to choose legacy for this purpose next. Now, I need a password here. It likes you to have a complex password, a combination of letters and numbers. Okay, it says that password is strong. I think it's a lame password. I made one that's really easy for me to remember, and I threw some numbers and letters at the end of it. The important thing to remember here is whatever you set the password to, you need to remember it. This password, you can hack this up and fix it, but it's a challenge. And so, why make life hard on yourself? Set this to a password that you can remember. If you have a password keeper like KeyPass or LastPass or FirstPass, something like that, put your password in it so you don't forget this password. Or if you insist, write it down. If this is not for a productive environment, I don't cringe too bad on you writing a password down, but just think about that if you're in a productive environment. All right, I'm gonna choose next. And we don't wanna change any of that. That's gonna be the service name. We'll go look at services and you'll see, hey, there's a service running for it. And it's gonna start the server up automatically when every time your PC reboots. That shouldn't be a problem. If it does, you can just, you can set it not to automatically start. We'll choose next. And we're not gonna mess with this. We're not gonna use MySQL as a document store. This is an advanced use case, so if you're using it for that, you know what to do here. And here are all the steps it's going to go through, and we're going to say execute. Okay, so usually the problem happens between starting server and applying security settings. Those are the two places where people often have the red X or the red, you know, the red X show up. So hopefully you had a clean install, and if you did, then it's just going to work. All right, we're going to choose finish and then a complete configuration. So we're gonna go next. And now it's done. Um, there is a log. If something did mess up, you could copy the log. It's not extremely useful, but you know, if you know a little bit about MySQL, it might be helpful. This is gonna automatically start MySQL Workbench, which we told it to install. So I'm gonna do finish. And I'm full screen this so we can see it better. All right, so this is how MySQL starts up. Right here, you have your database connection. It has already created one, created the def default one for you. Um, we can go and hit the wrench and take a look. And I actually didn't show us the one we wanted. I wanted to show you this one. All right, we can do edit connection just so you can see it. All right, so local instance, standard. It's connecting to local host. If you're familiar with networking, local host means your machine, the machine that you're on. Or it may say, 127.0.0.1 
that's also local host. That's an IP address that's local, it's not routable, and so therefore, you know, and then here's the port number we talked about. We didn't change it, so that should be fine. We can do test connection. Let's see if it's happy. And here it asks for the password. And because this is just a dev or test environment, I'm going to say save password in vault. That way I don't have to keep up typing that password every time. However, you still have to remember it because if you have something else software-wise connect to MySQL, you're going to have to know that password to get in. All right. And of course, connection was successful. So I'm going to close this. Normally, when you go into my save workbench, you will just go here, double click. It would ask you for the password if you didn't tell it to save. And then you have these sections. You have management, you have instance where it's startup or shutdown. Click there, and it just this is you can stop and start the server, that service that's running. And then here you have the databases, the schemas, aka databases. So I'm going to click on this because that's all I care about for what I'm going to do. And there you go. So there is the sys database that is created by default. Here are the tables that are created for it. views. Didn't have any views, but um, this is the stuff that's created by default. And so uh, we can close out this administrator part. So that all we have is a query. Uh, by clicking on X, and here you go. This is where you can start typing SQL commands. I usually don't use this for much of anything. So I'll click on this and make that go away so I have the full screen to see the query window. And this is where you would type in queries, um, run queries for creating databases using the structured query language. And that's it. That's how you install MySQL 8.x and MySQL Workbench 8.x. And if this is working, you're a go at this station. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day.